Hi, I'm really sorry that I haven't had recorded any video for quite a long time, but well, I just didn't have enough time to actually focus on that. But here it is, the latest video, the newest video. So today, in this video, I'll try to cover and explain all the ways that you can trigger PowerPoint desktops or the RPA um, desktop flow in a local attended way um, that does not require you to like, manually push the button on the console to trigger it and that does not require uh, a Cloudflow obviously to trigger it. Although some of the features I'll be, I'll be showcasing do or will require a premium license uh, one day, but as of today as I am testing and as you can see right now, uh, as I'll be showing you, um, the account I'll be using is not having a premium license assigned. So therefore, I think that as of now, they still work in a standard, um, under the standard license, maybe soon at some certain date, it will be changed and they will require you to have the premium license because like most of these um, features I'll be showing, they are already um, added or, or supplemented with this, with this diamond icon. So what says that? They do require the premium license. All right. So without having said, let's go to it. Hey, okay. So there is, uh, this is the, the premium, uh, the part of my desktop, um, console that I'm using. As you can see, I don't have a premium license because it still require, encourages me to go into premium. Um, and this diamond icon here, it will be, um, it will be seen. Uh, as I'll be showing you some of the features. So first, let's create a very simple flow. Um, no, I don't want to remind, uh, oh, sorry, upgrade. So let's create just a very simple flow uh, that the only purpose will be like to show a dialog window that, hey, I'm running, okay? Let's connect test runs. Um, and I said, the only thing it will do, it will just display this message that it's um, let's say it's information, uh, keep Mr. always on top. Yes. And let's say it will be closed after like whatever, 30 seconds. Cool. Right, so by default, when you have your local attended run and you want to trigger your flow locally, you need to press the button and this way to see that the flow is actually running. Yes, it's running so the dialog window is, uh, is shown, right? So that was a local attended run. However, there are four or even five more ways you can actually trigger your flow. So if you go to details of the flow in the menu, you'll find um, a, an option called create desktop shortcut. So as you click it, you'll then notice that on your desktop, there is a new file, a new shortcut created that once you double click, well, will not trigger the um, part of my desktop related to it because by default, um, part of my desktop has an option turned on that requires you to confirm that you really want to fire or to, to start this flow. Because if this is turned off, then you're actually able to create an automation that is triggered, um, for example, by a task scheduler, and then it runs in the background and you're not even aware that there is something going on. So by default, this security setting is on. So once you confirm that, yes, you want to run the flow, then it is obviously going to be triggered and running. So that was the first attempt. The second one is once you open the menu again and navigate to the properties of the flow and then to general tab, there is an option called run with keyboard shortcut. So as you define the keyboard shortcut, so for example, I'll do the control plus shift plus T because, uh, well, that is a shortcut I might be thinking about uh, to do 
um, relate with this flow. And then I press this combination. You'll again see that the uh, part of my desktop is downloading the flow and then it is running it. But because this way I somehow like trigger this flow intentionally because I use the keyboard shortcut, which is just doing the same thing as if I press the button, then I'm not asked to, uh, to confirm that I really want to run it. All right. So these two ways you can run an attended, local attended desktop flow for free. Like this does not require any premium license. However, there are more options that you can choose. So the first thing is that you can run your desktop flow using the console. And for that, you need to navigate to the details page of the flow properties. And you'll find here the run URL. As you can see, the run URL is already supplemented with diamond icon. So it suggests that at some certain moment of time uh, to use this approach, you'll need to use the, um, the premium license. So as we copy it, and then we open the command line, you're able to actually run it. But first, you need to find a path to an application called uh, PAD console host. Oops, there is something going on. Um, okay, so I need to navigate to Windows and program files like x86, sorry. And then under power to my desktop, I will find um, an app called PAD um, PAD console, console, console host. So that is the app that we can, that we must use when thinking about triggering desktop flow from the console. So and then as a parameter, I need to provide the run URL. Now, now that the run URL is built from several information. So first is the environment ID. And the second one is the workflow ID. Um, the point is that instead of workflow ID, the, the GUI you can as well use the workflow name because the assumption is that you shouldn't have two PADs having the same name. So the name is as well unique. So instead of workflow ID that matches the GUI of the, of the specific instance, you can you should be able to use as well the workflow name. So now once I hit run, you'll notice that there is this information again shown up that um, an external flow, external resource source invoked the flow, right? So there it is. I can continue and this is running. Now to turn this message off, you need to navigate to settings and under settings, you'll find a setting called display confirmation dialog when invoking externally, I mean flows externally. This is also a premium feature, but if you turn it off, you would be able to save it and then simply uh, make the same call again without now even having to confirm anything. See, so this way you are able to simply trigger a flow without having you know, any um, dialog window requesting you to confirm that you really want to run this externally trigger flow. Uh, so it can actually like run in the background. Now, another thing you can do is to use this task scheduler. So let's navigate to task scheduler to create a schedule for this flow being triggered. So I can now create a basic task. Um, And then let's say, let's trigger it daily. Yeah, one day at 12, why not? And then I want to start a program. So here again, I need to provide the same information as I would provide for the console. So first I need to navigate to PAD host, sorry, console, console host. And then as the arguments, what I need to provide is the same, is the same uh, path that you can find that, that I used for the console. So I need to use this run URL. Remember to surround it with quotes as it may contain some spaces. Okay, and that's done. So once you finish it, this 
flow will be triggered at 12.5 every day. Now just to test it, if I hit run now, you'll notice that it is actually running the same desktop flow. Now another thing you can do is to try and make this trigger a bit more complex. So to relate the trigger, not really from, not really to um, a a sorry, schedule, but you can relate it to some other activities. So what you can do is to trigger your PAD as someone is logging on, as someone is starting the computer, if there is a user inactivity uh, on the machine and on many other um, events that can, that can occur related to the user activity, but as well you can relate it to an event. And so what I can do is to try, for example, to make an event that will launch my PAD every time a specific application is started. So I was looking, how can I relate um, a PAD to an incoming message? I have no idea in which log um, path is the information about new emails, new incoming emails stored. That I have no idea really. But what I found out is, for example, that I can relate uh, my PAD uh, to Outlook. So I can select the logs, um, that is the application type. Then I can scroll down and see the Outlook. And then as the event ID, um, I'll go to Event Viewer and find uh, something around around the application logs for, for Outlook. And Let me close it for now and then I'll launch it again. Okay, so now it's launching. And here, yeah, there are like two, two activities or two events uh, recorded related to the, to, the, um, to the start of the Outlook. So I can use the event ID 63 because uh, that looks like uh, the one that is really um, triggered as the Outlook is starting. So I'll turn it off and say 63, not 43, not 41, uh, just 63, okay? And so right now, this um, flow is going to be triggered when an Outlook application is started. So let's see. Outlook is starting. Yep, and the PAD started as well, right? So with that, you are able to make a more advanced um, scenarios for these automated um, local attended flows. So how to start them, when to trigger them. Because if you know really logs well, I think you are able even to relate uh, when the when a PAD should be triggered. Uh, for example, as, as I mentioned, you can relate them to a new email that is incoming or to any specific event that occurs in any other applications that you're using. So with that, you are going to be able to make some more sophisticated local attended automations. And uh, yeah, so with that having said, this is the end of what you're able to do with, uh, with the um, local attended triggers. Know that most of them is requiring you to have the premium license, as I mentioned, because as you see, as you saw, they're all supplemented with this diamond icon. So they possibly will not run if you have the free account. Just keep that in mind, all right? And uh, as mentioned as well, if you're a more advanced uh, Windows Logs user or Log Events user, and you're able and you know where to look for specific events in this big directory of paths and, and, uh, and events, then you're more likely to be able to, to relate the trigger in a task with a specific uh, event that occurs um, inside your Windows session. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this video uh, informative and helpful. Um, if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts around what I was showcasing, simply write them down in comments below the video. And as always, I ask you to subscribe and like the video. And until the next time. Thank you very much and bye-bye.